just keep doing what you're doing, which is what we're talking about today, right? Yeah, I think we're going to uh, show a little bit about uh, like a little uh, way that we use on our trading strategies, and like what we were doing in the competition. Um, I think it should be pretty interesting for people to see. Yeah, definitely. This will be good for everybody. After all, a third place team, you know, you got some good strategies over there. So yeah. we'll be listening to you today and <laughs> see what you did. <laughs> yeah, man. I think I think like the first the first uh, thing is like it's really important. Obviously, when when you start trading is um, the, the, like my my style of trading and and naturally the a lot of the people in in chart champions as well. Their their style of trading is like we really really actually love to trade sideways ranges. And I know a lot of people are like, uh, a lot of people love to trade like really impulsive moves, uh, really big moves down and really big moves up. But uh, for, for me, I, I really enjoy when price is going sideways because it actually makes the makes the way that you trade a lot easier to, to define. Um, so it all, all starts with like doing your original technical analysis and uh, you can be using tools such as like your Fibonacci tools, Elliott Waves, uh, your speed fans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the end of the day, you want to just be able to. I think you can go really deep with technical analysis and make it pretty confusing, but you can also keep it really, really, really simple. So I've got a, a few lines already drew here on the chart, but you can see that really simply they they are defined from here. We had an area of resistance. Here we have an area of support and we could say this is our key support and this is our key resistance we, we also have this midpoint which i'll move for, for this video but and i might as well just remove this so really we can just see we have an area of resistance and an, and an area of support All right. and this this is on the the hourly chart at the moment and so my, my strategies are really really it's, it's really simple really when when we reach the top of a, a sideways range we are looking for short positions. And when it comes to the low of the range, we're looking for longs. And so you would generally then not get involved around the middle of the range here. And, and you just have to be patient waiting for the rise where you would look for your shorts. Stop loss, you can generally put above the high or wait for something like this. Uh, for example, we see a move up here. We see a maybe like a swing failure pattern come back into the range. And then this is where you would look for your short positions. Stop obviously above the last high and down to the lower the range. And mm. what we could, what we say is just like trade the range until it breaks. So eventually this, this range will break with a break to let's say $70,000 or, or a break proper break or the lower the range. And we get to $50,000. But the, the, the worst thing that you can do in my opinion, anyway, in like trading is, is anticipate thinking that this is going to break out. Um, as you can see here, this is this is now over one week of price action. And, and over the past week, we literally have just been going from the high to the low, from the high to the low. Obviously, we, we did have a bit of a deviation here, which um, if obviously if you're longing the lower the range here, did, did result in a loss. So this is a, a losing trade. But then when you reclaim back into the range, you get back into your longs. And as you can see, we've, we have actually been trading this during the whole competition and it ended well very well and so the, the one loss here that you have taken obviously you're you're off the back of four wins you take a loss and the loss is obviously very small in comparison to trading the whole of the range so if you're taking a two percent loss here but then each of the winners is moving on to six ten percent um you know it's just the old good old saying of keep your losses small your winners big and you know, you really can make it very, very, very simple. Obviously, there's there's things that you can go a little bit more in depth when this, and this is where you can start to look at things like order flow, uh, like how many people are actually buying and how many people are selling. And this offers like an extra layer of complexity. But at the end of the day, I do think that you can you can keep things pretty simple as long as you're able to, you know, in, in trading, it really is like it's so much based on emotions. And right. at the end of the day, price goes up, down or sideways. And, and no nobody knows where price is going. Like nobody in the world will know where price is going next, <laughs> apart yeah. from the market makers, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> but like for, for, for me and you, we, we have no idea. So yeah. you just have to find like a strategy that you know yourself, you know where you're right, you know where you're wrong, and you feel you've got a high probability. But at the end of the day, like 
yeah, we we rejected the top of the range here, and we could say there was a good probability that there was a it was going to fall down because you're at the top of the range. At the end of the day, it could have broke up here, and then that mm -hmm. would have been a losing trade. But I think like the most important thing for for people to acknowledge is just that tra trading really is just a game of probabilities, and and you just want to take what you feel is a high probability trade. And if if you lose the trade, it really shouldn't be like this massively you know really a lot of people take a loss and they get really depressed they they they, they get sleepless nights and it's just like yeah <laughs> you know i i also used to get that you know so i also used to get really depressed and when i lose and stuff like this but it's just i think you just have to change your perspective of the market and that is every trade is is a random result like nobody knows the outcome of the trade so if you enter your trades with the mindset of acknowledging the result is random then you're not going to have this preconceived conception that this is going to be a winning trade. And when you, you, you acknowledge that the trade can have high probabilities, but it can always lose. Uh, I, I think then you start to change your mindset. And then when you change your mindset, naturally, I, I, I honestly feel that you will start winning more trades just from having the mindset in the correct, you know, just by having the correct mindset, by actually following your technical analysis and, mm -hmm you know really, really just just trading the probabilities and and for me yeah and a lot of other people in the competition we were pretty much trading this range this is this is how we ended ended third place to be honest <laughs> right so uh did, is this always how you've traded or did you sort of progress into this more uh simplified streamlined style yeah so yeah my my, my trading definitely has changed a lot over the over the years um so I, I used to trade a lot with like RSI and MACD and uh, a lot of like the indicators that you just learn about when you first pick up a trading book and, and everyone talks about like MACD and stuff. And and so I used to use uh, MACD and RSI, but I used to trade the stock market before I traded crypto. And, and okay. I actually found it, it was pretty decent. I think the stock market is so simple. Um, and also the stock market just goes up and up and up and up. So. <laughs> <laughs> So far, <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> since I've been trading, it's just been a massive bull market. Whereas I think right. cryptocurrency, I, I'm personally a, more of a day trader in cryptocurrency. So, mm -hmm. um, whereas in the stock market, I'm a swing trader. And I think like RSI and MACD and these sort of tools that they're, they're good in, they're good when you know what you're doing with them. Um, but I don't ever use them in crypto. I don't really feel they're that effective for lower term time frame traders. So, so yeah, I, I definitely would say my, my trading has changed a lot, really, in terms of the tools that I use. And uh, I think, like, I know a lot of the tools in terms of all the different theories. And then it's just mm -hmm. going through the process of, like, learning the theories and then working out what works best for you. And I'd right. say, like, what works best for me is a mixture of, of order flow, which is... Mm -hmm uh i think it's a little bit complex but it's, it's not that hard but it's not simple either <laughs> but order right. flow is basically where you can just see how many people you actually see how many people are buying and actually see how many people are selling and so you can start to see like if there's really big because you always want to trade with the bigger player um you don't want to trade with like the small fish per se you want to look into the charts to see how many people are actually buying and how many people are actually selling and then order flow is like when you read the footprint chart, so you try and let's see the footprints of the bigger players, you know, where are your million dollar, or well not really million dollars, that's, we're talking about like 100 millions, like where are they coming in, where are they defending, mm -hmm. and when you can kind of get that heads up. Of course, it doesn't give a 100% win rate, but you can get really, really, really high win rates by doing your original technical analysis and like mm -hmm. making the plan of, okay, I'm going to short here and I'm going to long yeah. here. And then you can get that extra step of confirmation of when you come up to the high, you can mm. kind of look into the orders of how many people actually want to short here. Like, are we getting a few million shorting or are we starting to see like the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions defending this level? And you start to right. see like your divergences and, you know, this is how you can start to get like a higher win rates. Um, mm -hmm. So you'll, you'll adjust your level according to that. For, for me, these levels are like now set in stone per se. Like I won't be adjusting this one or this one uh, just because yeah. I've had, for me, under this range, they've, they've been really successful. But let's say like we break out of this range and yeah. uh, we, we make a, we start to make a new range. Then like a tool that I would use, for example, 
is something pretty simple like a Fibonacci extension. So I might take this move and say, right, if we start to break out of this range, we have this first daily around 61k. But, but we mm -hmm. could say in terms of the Fib extension, we want one to one, we'd look for around $65,000. So if this, the way that we would say is we would look for shorts at the top of this range. But if we break out of this range, Mm -hmm. And you start to see like volume increasing, open interest increasing, like the bigger, bigger players are, are moving up the order. Then I would say like a natural place to look for or then expect where a new sideways range could be put in would be around like your one to one extension. A quick recap of the price action over the past few days. Obviously, we had the long from the weekly position where we were trading the range. That range in the end broke quite swiftly to the upside, topping out around that one to one extension at sixty five thousand dollars. From $65,000, we put in very similar price action to the prior range, making a low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and then another lower low coming back below our daily level, really confirming the bearishness of this uh, local trend. As we get acceptance back into the range, you get start to get a lot more confidence in the short positions. Personally, I had a short uh, from around 63000 originally trying to trade a rising wedge in bearish three drives pattern, but then was able to let it run all the way to down to around $51,000. And, uh, you know, this is just really quickly recap of how that trade went and how we really did top out and put in that range as predicted at around $65,000 being the one to one extension. Uh, these are right. generally because a lot of people that are longing here uh, would take profits here. A lot of other traders would be shorting here. So it's an area that you could expect like a, a range to be put in, like just like what happens here. And then mm -hmm. that's where I would say is for me anyway, I'd really love to trade another range rather than like trying to trade the breakout and trade from here to here. I would prefer mm -hmm. to trade once we start to get the range forming here, because likewise, I didn't actually trade any of this move up, which is okay. about a move of 17%. And a lot of people are going to be like, wow, you missed a 17% move. But then the way that I would trade is all of this price action over the past week has mm -hmm. actually equaled more in terms of percentage. If you've been trading the lows to the highs, there's, there's more money to be made here than there is uh. just by buying and holding this section here. Um, and, right. and I also believe that a lot of people, if they have bought here, for example, it's very likely that they've been stopped out because we took the lows here on this mm -hmm. section. And then when we spend so much time at the lows, uh, it's, uh, it's very likely. And you can also see this in the open interest, like this whole move down was on decreases of open interest. So a lot of people have been stopped out over the past week. So the people that just like buy and hold uh, mm -hmm. or just like try and trade the swing on this, it's it's likely mm -hmm. they've all, they've, a lot of people have been stopped out. And that's like, we can see that in the open interest. So by just like trading the range, for me anyway, I'm... I make more money trading the ranges and oh I, I also just find it more simple. <laughs> the, right. just, yeah. At the end of the day, so it's, just, it's simple. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you tend to sort of back back off when it's uh doing a big fluctuation and you think it might be going to the next range? You sort of just wait wait it out? Well, like for example, right right now I hold a long position because of the mm -hmm. fact that we're at that the lower the range. So if, if we were to just let's say massively like break out here. Yeah. I would, I would hold just hold on to my long and not just try and short the top. What I will generally do is hold. I know on like Femex you can do like sub accounts, which is really useful. So you can yeah. hold a long here, and then on your sub account short here. And if you blast yeah. through the top of the range, you get stopped out on the short and just continue to hold your long. So like the sub account feature is really helpful for this because you can hold. You know. A lot of people are like, oh, you have to be long. Or you have to be, short. you know, you can hold a long and a short at the same time. And right. if it looks like this is going to be broken, then, you know, close the short for a loss, hold on to the long. Um, it's, that's a that's a tactic that I love to do is like hold two positions simultaneously. So, for example, when we were short in the top of the range here, I was looking for a long at the lower the range. We mm -hmm. see this long got stopped out, but I was simultaneously holding my short until we've reclaimed the range. And then it's for me saying, okay, let's close the short, go back into a long. So when we are reaching the highs and lows, I'll, I'll generally have two positions, uh, long and a short at the same time. And, and, and then 
wait for the market to show me rather than like trying to predict per se you kind of just right. wait for the market to show its hands yeah which, okay uh, which i don't think a lot of people do like i don't think many people take you take advantage of the um uh sub accounts but I, I think it's pretty helpful to be honest yeah that's a that's a really cool use for it i think yeah, yeah. a lot of people could learn from that i think yeah i i i definitely think so so is there um was was there any part just to bring it to the competition a little bit uh was yeah. there any like interesting part of the competition or did it sort of just like go just stick to your strategy and it sort of just kept in that sort of range and yeah. was pretty smooth sailing yeah i mean we fluctu well i mean during the whole competition we were we were really quick to get into like sixth place and then we during the whole thing we were ranging between sixth and third place and i know third place was like where you got the increase in the in the bonuses so we wanted to try and get top three um right. And then we got top three with like a few days to go. And for 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 me for us though, it's like we're not really high high leverage traders. Mm. Um, so I, I personally would never use more than really times five leverage. But on a day to day, I'm I'm I use no leverage. And so right. for the competition, obviously you have to. Well, you kind of have to use quite a lot of leverage, <laughs> which is um which is not for everybody, I suppose. And a lot of our members also don't like the leverage. But um. Right. Yeah, once we once we secured third, it was more just like just just trade as normal because at the start yeah. people were highly leveraging to try and like just get get up into the top ten, and then right. we, when we done that, it was then just like we've we've got a decent PNL, which I think at the time was like fifty percent, and yeah. then we just kept going day day to day with normal leverages, and yeah, ended I think we ended with a hundred and nine average. Uh, yeah. PNL, so the average was like doubling their accounts, but yeah, it's it's really hard to you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's like the people that want it are like they're literally amazing because right. yeah, it's, it's hard. It's really hard <laughs> to to right, use that much right. leverage consistently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so at the beginning, you sort of altered your normal strategy a little bit just because it was the the competition. So you needed to like break out a little first and then yeah. once you're up there you sort of went back to a normal strategy sort of playing it safe maintaining your position yeah like i know uh, <laughs> quite a lot of us just done like a uh a, a, an, an initial first really high leverage trades just to like increase the average pnl like just trying to get a good pnl because it's pretty obvious to win or at least do good in the competition you have to you have to use high leverage so yeah. We kind of just thought let's use a bit of let's increase our leverage for the first few days to get a, get us in the top ten and then lower the leverages back to normal and just trade as we always would. Right. Yeah. Well, hey, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, it worked in the end. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I know. I know you don't have too much time right now, so uh, I don't want to keep you too long. Is there is there anything else you would uh, like to add or anything, or do you need to get going? Um. Uh um yeah i don't think there's really anything else i i, I suppose like for a final tip for everyone would just be <clears throat> yeah just, just really simply when when you when you get involved in trading like the, i know it's like counterproductive but, well I, I think the most important thing in trading is to not get obsessed by the numbers and not get obsessed by how much you're winning and you're losing like you you really want to focus on the process and the process is doing technical analysis and and then entering good trades and if you're right. like really focused on wanting to become a millionaire overnight or so <laughs> focused on loot winning, 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 like I, I, I think it doesn't help you. And if, if you really just block out the money that you're doing and just focus on taking good trades, like the money just comes naturally and you're not you're not even thinking about it. And if you're just thinking about making good trades, mm -hmm. the making money part just happens on its own. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah i think lots of new people they come in and they start trading away all their money and they don't <laughs> even know what they're doing <laughs> yeah so yeah. people will, will have they, they literally have no in. idea yeah like <laughs> so over the past few months we had so many new members and they were just like you know they've just lost all their money because they've they just right. joined cryptocurrency they started to trade and they lost <laughs> everything and it's just like yeah they had no idea what they're doing so obviously they're going to lose every it's, it's just gambling like in right, my opinion right. 
exactly. that's totally gambling and when you are trading it's not a it's it, i suppose it's a gamble per se in that you are trading probabilities but you are a casino right. where you have the probabilities in your favor so i yeah. i don't refer to that as gambling i refer to that as well trading like trading. we are the casino <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> yeah yeah i have uh if you, if you have like one more minute i uh, do you yeah, have yeah, like another for it. question okay cool uh so obviously the competition was bitcoin uh but i was just wondering like do you trade any uh other coins altcoins or anything more obscure yeah i mean um personally personally i'm i'm primarily focused on bitcoin i just love bitcoin uh but right. i know like a lot of people in our group they love altcoins <laughs> and yeah. uh they, they they trade all these altcoins like cardano and dot and you, you name it they like they find all these altcoins but personally i i just trade bitcoin um i mean i will trade altcoins like this week i've been trading a lot of tezos um, okay. so if, if there's a really good opportunity i i will trade an altcoin but it's generally like someone will alert me, hey, this looks really good. Right, <laughs> like I'm yeah. not spending a lot of time researching the alts. I, I just spend all my time on Bitcoin. But if someone tells me there's a good opportunity, then I will put money on it. But yeah. I'm not every day like doing my own research for the altcoins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you, I mean, so I guess it's more, you know, you've already put the time into Bitcoin. So you kind of feel like you know it a bit better. And yeah then, for, you... for me like that that is like you 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 learn the characteristics of these these coins and like every coin has its own characteristics and its yeah. personality per se so right. i just like really under kind of understand bitcoin and if i try and trade a altcoin that i've never heard of in my life like i don't uh -huh. know the characteristics of that coin so i i struggle i just i just <laughs> i'm not as good at trading a random alt as i am something that i've traded for a long time uh yeah. so i would generally let someone else <laughs> uh just <laughs> alert me to the opportunity and then i'll say i'll like verify it with my own technical analysis right but yeah i i, I just have a lot more fun trading bitcoin yeah like, uh, I, I also I, I, a lot, a lot, a lot of like, oh no go ahead sorry i just it's it's almost like you if you spend enough time you almost develop like a relationship with it like yeah you, you kind of know it <laughs> yeah. uh, 100 100 uh, because i used to trade altcoins back in like 2018 a lot and like i would trade the same altcoins every day and because they would always move in the same patterns and uh, re really from like 2020 really onwards and it, mainly this year I, I just stopped trading the alts and just focused on bitcoin because for me, it was just really time consuming to do all the alts <laughs> and, yeah. and I just didn't have the time to do it. But um, yeah, I, I also think there's like a misconception between a lot of people where they, they think I need to trade altcoins because uh, Bitcoin's too much money and, and I could buy one Bitcoin or I could buy 5 million of this random altcoin <laughs> and I'd prefer to hold five. And it's just like, it, it, it's just not the way that you should view it. Like you, you can make the same right. amount of money on Bitcoin as you can these altcoins. It's yeah, it's a, the, bit, it's a bit arbitrary, right? Because it's yeah. not like you actually have to trade one Bitcoin at a time. Exactly. You can just <laughs> trade like the fraction of the Bitcoin. You can leverage. Yeah. It, it, the, the argument that people say of, oh, I need to trade this other thing because I've missed Bitcoin. It's just, yeah, the argument is just invalid in my opinion. <laughs> like you can, right. you yeah. can make so much money on Bitcoin alone, even yeah. with smaller amounts of money. It's just, yeah. But that, right. that that's an argument I hear a lot from people. Of, oh, I don't I don't have the money sure. to trade Bitcoin. <laughs> it's like you need a <laughs> yeah. lot of money to trade it. <laughs> yeah, like you don't you don't actually have to buy a one Bitcoin. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, you can trade with like point zero 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 one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, this has been really cool. Actually, I thought I thought it was quite informative watching the chart and hearing about your yeah. strategy. Like this this is one thing that we could see here. Like you have a potential like swing fire pattern that's happening like right now. And this is like when you take a high. You see, you take this like by a dollar here, and then you're coming back down. It, these are a lot of things. I mean, we I I could talk literally for hours and hours and hours <laughs> about Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Hey, maybe, maybe we can maybe we can do it again later. I I'd definitely yeah. be up for it. Yeah, I would I would be up for it as well. It's it's yes, yeah, it's, it's fun and obviously yeah, I love your exchange and yeah, oh, thank it's, you. it's a it's a yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, same here. Really really cool talking to you.
I would just like to wrap up the video with a summary of how that trade ended, like we were talking about inside of the interview. We were obviously long from our weekly level of support. In the end, we were making our way up and consolidating in this region of the chart. We knew our key levels above us, where one would look for short positions. In the end, we actually went very quickly and powerfully through the top key level, topping out at our daily resistance. At this point, I knew we were at our daily resistance and I knew this was the place where I looked for shorts. Personally, closed the long from weekly and I got into this short position based off of the fact that we had come up to our daily level, which we were ready and waiting for with our plan. And then after seeing the rejection, we were coming down, forming some bearish divergences with a retest of the daily. If you're a subscriber of our YouTube channel, you would know right live in the time as it was happening, I was making that YouTube video saying we are at our last level of resistance on that daily level. And obviously I was talking through the exact trade I was taking, which was, which was <laughs> my short trade. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we can see now together, that short trade that was taken up at the daily, giving you the important update as it was happening, we got that lovely move to the downside, really, really great move to the downside. And obviously, where did we bottom out at? It was off of our middle key level. So when we add back on those key levels, look at this, we come straight down to 58,400 to almost the dollar to get another really powerful bounce to the upside and now consolidating right on our higher key level of 59,000, about $700 wanted to add on this summary to really show you the power of technical analysis. You can see these levels we had in advance and then the respect that they are getting, you know, it's, it's very accurate. And I want to just emphasize, we do our technical analysis to get the levels. Once we have the levels, we make our trading plan and then we execute, we take the trades. And as you can see here, we've made a lot of money from really just, just following the plan and having faith in the technical analysis. Hope that you've enjoyed this interview. Hope that you've enjoyed the video. You've learned a little bit and, um, you know, really have seen the power and money-making machine that is top technical analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much and have a brilliant day. Thank you ever so much. Bye.